Hi, everybody. This is uh, crazy. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, in the rare event that there is a future to this wild planet we're living on right now, uh, there was a huge, weird uh, disease outbreak, and it forced a lot of people to be indoors a long time, uh, including this guy. So, if you don't know who I am, and this is somehow miraculously trying to like tilt my camera there the first video of mine you've ever seen welcome my name is joseph wilson and i am an anthropologist and historian and i guess a youtuber now uh, <laughs> uh but for everyone else this is for you guys this video uh this is a huge uh thank you video for everyone who's been subscribing uh, in my first year on YouTube, I started this in, I think, January of last year uh, with my first video upload, doing battles using Rome Total War, and uh, COVID made things crazy, and I decided to keep going with it, because what else was I going to do with my time? Uh, <laughs> uh, so this video is uh, going to be not just saying thank you to the hundred people that are now subscribed after a year which is weird that there's that many people wanting to watch these videos and uh also a huge thank you to the people that have been watching even if you haven't subscribed i have some videos where i have over a thousand views and to be honest the graphics quality on them suck because uh back in the day which i've been on here now long enough to say back in the day for stuff uh, I used to film things on my older computer, which couldn't do the video screen record because of how old it was. I would use my iPad propped up and record it that way. <laughs> and in a laundry room, because I was living in the hostel at the time. I was recording in a laundry room. <laughs> and so there was often sounds of dryers tumbling clothes while I was doing battles from... Alexander the Great's time. It was craziness. Uh, but we are now somehow here where the production is still okay. And uh, we're at 100 subscribers. So I thought a really cool idea for uh, a huge thank you gift for you all would be to create a really fun video detailing some of my favorite YouTubers uh, who are also anthropologists or historians that are producing really cool content that I think if you like what I make, you should also follow them. Because uh, I think if you like what I do, you'll definitely like what they do. So we're going to do a top 10, like my top 10 list of YouTubers you should follow. If you like my stuff, you'll like their stuff. Uh, some of them are YouTube channels that have thousands, if not millions, of subscribers already. And some are like me. They've got uh, 100 subscribers or less and uh, deserve more followers than I think they currently have. Uh, but whether it's the, the famous Instagram slash uh, YouTube influencers of anthropology, or if it's uh, the lowly, the lowly, bachelor's degree track folks that are trying to pay the rent on time. Uh, this video is also for those guys. And uh, if you guys like this video and you have a YouTube uh, group or person that you think uh, should have made the list, let me know in the comments who they are and uh, who knows, maybe I'll I'll recognize them, or maybe I don't, and it'll make me go follow them, because I'll find their stuff really cool, too. But without further ado, let's delve first into a little bit more about my background with anthropology and how I got into YouTube work, and then we'll delve into those 10 YouTube channels you should look more into. So, like I said, uh, my name is Joseph Wilson. I'm an anthropologist and historian. I got my bachelor's degree in both history and anthropology as my two majors, and then I minored in Native American Studies 
at Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, Illinois. Uh, so go Salukis for anyone watching. Uh, God knows they need it right now because our sports are not doing great this year. Uh, but uh did my uh, bachelor's at SIU, uh, history, anthropology, and Native American studies. Uh, after I graduated from college, I did two years in AmeriCorps and started doing independent research into the sort of cultures, but also the history of women's sports around the world. Uh, before I started my YouTube channel, I published seven books on the anthropology of women's sports including on the topics of soccer, uh, rodeo, uh, fencing, surfing, and basketball. Uh, yeah, and uh, also dabble in a lot of just kind of anthropological hobbies. Uh, I've always loved cooking foods from around the world, learning more about how culture can influence uh, the food a culture eats, but also, you know, history of where certain food comes from. A good example is uh, my actual history senior thesis was, uh, rather than writing a traditional paper, I actually wrote a cookbook of Victorian English cuisine. So uh, I love history of food. Um, I, I love watching women's sports, love uh, playing sports. I'm a fencing instructor. I've even got a fencing shirt on right now, as you can see. Uh, but I also play a bunch of other sports. Uh, so, yeah, so, you know, I, <clears throat> a lot of times when I'm doing research trips, I <clears throat> am staying in hostels while I'm traveling, especially if it's during a really long trip. I might do work trade at a hostel, which, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, like, you've ne you don't know what a hostel is, you don't know what work trade is. A uh, hostel is like a hotel, but uh, that has dorm rooms, you know, like a college dorm with multiple bunk beds. And it's a really cheap way to travel on a budget if you're looking to do that. Uh, but what's really cool with a lot of hostels is if you know you're going to be in a particular place for a pretty long time, like maybe a, a month or longer, a lot of them will allow you to basically work in exchange for sleeping there for free. Uh, usually it's somewhere between like 21 to 24 hours a week. They just ask you to like sweep up or... Uh, you know, show new guests where their room is. It's pretty easy work, and uh, it's a great way to travel on a budget also, especially if you want to really get to know a particular place by spending a prolonged period of time there. Uh, but I was doing work trade at a hostel in Seattle, and um, uh, it was a little bit slow because I it was a little bit slower getting funding going for other research trips. I wasn't quite sure. If I wanted to start grad school yet or what I wanted to do. Um, so there was a particular YouTube channel I started watching in my free time. Uh, and this this isn't on the list because they're not really a historian or anthropologist, but they definitely deserve a shout out too. And that's Pixelated Apollo. Anyone who watches uh, my videos on the military history where I use Total War games, they probably already know who this guy is. Uh, but if you don't, Pixelated Apollo is a guy who uh, basically mostly but not exclusively makes really cool YouTube videos using a series of games called Total War. Uh, it's a franchise uh, made by Creative Assembly. Those are the games that I use in my battle videos. And um, so this guy was making videos with the Total War games and I started binge watching his videos because they were awesome. And uh, I hadn't played one of the Total War games in years, so I actually <laughs> immediately like called my mom and asked her to like if if I had an old copy of one of my Total War games at home still, you know, buried in the garage somewhere. And she found it, and mailed it to me, and I started playing it for the first time in years. And um, you know, decided okay, well. Uh, so Pixelated Apollo sometimes, but pretty rarely, makes videos where he actually tries to reenact historical battles. He usually just does, uh, you know, multiplayer battles online, records them, and then uploads them, gives commentary, uh, which I thought was really cool. But uh, the historian in me wanted to make it a little bit more historical. When I was a kid, I used to use the Total War games to try to reenact historical battles. 
to sort of learn almost like, you know, put myself in the shoes of that historical general or whatever, and, you know, learn just how difficult some of these battles were to win. And I thought, hey, you know, like this would be a really cool idea for a YouTube channel. Uh, because from what I could tell, most of the people making YouTube videos with the Total War games, they weren't really doing that. Sometimes they did, but they weren't really delving into trying to make it as historically accurate as possible. And so that's what I started doing. Um, I started making really old videos where I was, uh, you know, reenacting historical battles. And it didn't take long for me making these to realize, you know, like, there's there's kind of a market for this. And not just, I think, in the military history either, because from what I could tell, there's a lot of kind of, there's a lot of videos about history on YouTube, but there's not a lot of videos about anthropology. Really, what I was doing, um, you could make the case, and I understand if not, uh, but you can make the case that it's experimental archaeology. It's trying to reenact history using the tools and methods uh, used from the past. And it's a video games. Obviously, they didn't have video games in Alexander the Great's time. Uh, but, you know, given that we're trying to create a scale and uh, a reenactment that would have included the death of people and animals, it's probably best we don't, like, actually do that in real life. So the video game is a simulation for uh, reenacting this kind of historical moment. Works out really well as anthropology. And so it was pretty recently that I thought, okay, well, what if we started making other historical and anthropological topics? Because there's plenty of history channels on YouTube. Um, and there's even a lot of archaeology channels as well. And we'll delve into that. But... There wasn't a lot of things that I could find about, like, primatology or uh, bioarchaeology or, um, you know, the, the sociology of food, for example. Um, and there's, you know, things like Binging with Babish, another great channel if you don't know what that is. It's a guy who takes foods from fictional TV shows and tries to recreate them in a kitchen. Uh, to see what they taste like, but really cool. Uh, but there's no, like, bizarre foods of YouTube. There's no um, reservations uh, or, or parts unknown or, or no reservations with Anthony Bourdain for YouTube, or at least from what I could tell. So what I wanted to do with this is expand it now that we're at the end of our first year and we're starting our second year on this channel expanded to cover all these amazing topics of anthropology that there's not really a market for on YouTube. Not because I want to be the only guy doing it. I don't. But because I don't want to be the only guy doing it. I want people to see my videos and say, hey, I think I could do that better. And then they do it better. And then I fall in love with their stuff. Because at the end of the day, like I'm making these videos because I want other people to do it. And they just haven't done it yet. Um... So with that being said, let's go ahead and delve into it. Let's take a look at the work of some of these really cool YouTubers that are making really cool content related to anthropology and history and uh, learn more about why I think you should give these guys a follow. The first in our series of uh, YouTube channels I think you guys should follow if you like my stuff is Feature History. They're a really cool channel that delves into topics of world history. And you can kind of see that here. Everything from military history to uh, historical disease outbreaks and just weird moments in history as well. Uh, sometimes they delve into art history. Sometimes they delve into historical topics brought up in popular media, like video games and uh, certain movies as well. But they do a really cool job of covering world history across the world, not just, you know, Western Europe and uh, what I like to call Anglo-America, Canada and the United States. So it's a really cool channel uh, to kind of help you learn more about some of the topics of world history that's not often discussed in historical textbooks. 
Number nine goes to Mythos and Logos, World, Mythology, and Religions. As you can imagine, this topic is all about world mythology and religions. Uh, these videos cover a lot of topics within uh, mythology and religion and folklore and even sometimes how it shapes pop culture today. Uh, topics like how mythology played a role in Tolkien's writings or in certain TV shows. So it's really cool. Uh, they delve into topics not just about, you know, European mythologies either. Uh, they delve into different mythologies from all over the world. And it's really cool uh, channel there if you want to learn more about world religions and uh, mythology around the world. So this channel here is actually one of my favorite ones on YouTube, Geography Now. Uh, these guys make really cool videos, which you can see here. Uh, one of the things that I love about them is they make videos for each individual country delving into the geography of the country, not just the physical geography, but also the culture. They delve into the types of foods uh, eaten there. They delve into the types of ethnic groups that reside in each country. Uh, they discuss uh, politics and religion and art and architecture, but they also talk about how, uh, you know, the ecology of a country affects the people and how the people of a country affect their ecology. But they also make super cool videos about the flags of countries, and I love a good flag. Uh, I love these guys. This channel is super awesome. If you want to learn more about the world and the cultures that live in it today, um, Geography Now is a really cool channel where you can learn all about it. Uh, and they're really fun. They have a team of people that all put these videos together. They're all super enjoyable. Uh, all very funny, but very educational as well. Number seven goes to David Ian Howe. So this guy is super cool. Uh, he is, a, I believe, an archaeologist, but he focuses on the relationship between humans and domesticated animals, mostly dogs. So if you love learning about uh, you know, like dogs and the history of uh, humans and dogs, uh, you know, relations. Uh, David Ian Howe is a super cool archaeologist who makes videos about that, but he also covers other archaeological topics as well. Um, but it's it's a really cool channel to get to know, and, uh, you know, especially if you want to learn more about um, the Stone Age, you know, the Neolithic era, and and how humans and dogs and have coexisted uh, since then. So really cool channel. So the number six video or number six uh, YouTube channel that gets the list is Home Team History. So these guys are super cool because they focus on African and African diaspora history. If you're not familiar with that term, basically what it means is uh, encompassing the history of not just the continent of Africa, but peoples that are of African descent living on other continents as well, whether that's the descendants of slaves from the transatlantic slave trade, or even, you know, the descendants of, uh, you know, like Moors that migrated to Great Britain during Tudor England, uh, and the role of, um, I believe there were Swahili uh, traders who, you know, went out to trade in the Indian Ocean and all the way, as far away as Japan. Uh, so this covers all of that. This covers all of that in one really cool channel that delves into a lot of uh, overlooked moments of African and African diaspora history to cover some really cool topics about some really fascinating moments of world history related to Africa and the African diaspora. So my number five spot goes out to Amelia, the archaeologist. She is an awesome archaeologist who makes a really cool series of YouTube videos on archaeology, predominantly uh, terminologies. So if you want to learn more about some of the work archaeologists do, she's a really cool resource. Uh, but she also discusses 
um, certain rituals and uh, concepts in archaeology as well. I really loved her video on the Greek amphoras. Uh, and if you can't tell from checking out this video, uh, she also does all of her videos in American Sign Language, or ASL. So it's a really cool resource, too, for people who may be deaf viewers on YouTube, because as you can probably imagine, there's not a lot of videos that have people doing sign language in the video, and a lot of deaf people have to rely on subtitles, including on my channel, unfortunately, uh, to find out what the video they're watching is all about. Uh, but Amelia makes super cool videos on really cool topics, and if you don't speak ASL, she does a really good job on her captions. Um, so just turn on the captions, and you will be totally fine. So <clears throat> my number four uh, YouTube uh, channel I think you guys should subscribe to goes out to Stefan Milo which I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong because I think it's Slovenian, if I remember right. Uh, but uh, he was another historian slash uh, anthropologist. I think he's specifically an archaeologist. I might be wrong about that, though. Uh, but he makes really cool videos on, uh, on sort of the lesser-known moments of world history, talking about some of the sort of frontier moments of things like the Roman Empire, but also... Uh, some super old school, you know, Paleolithic era human history, like discussing uh, pre anatomically modern humans and, uh, you know, human evolution. He discusses some really cool topics about Neolithic era and cultures of it. So, really cool if you want to learn more about some of, you know, early human history and uh, pre recorded human history as well. So the number three spot goes out to Behind the Trowel. Uh, if you don't know, Behind the Trowel is run by archaeologist uh, Natasha Bilson, I believe is her last name. Uh, but she is actually kind of a growing name in archaeology right now because she's starting to get her face on some TV shows. So congrats, Natasha. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, she makes really cool videos on her channel Behind the Trowel, uh, some of which are archaeological terminology. Others are, you know, responses to portrayals of archaeology in uh, popular media. But she also has a running series, I believe, every Saturday morning, at least it's morning in Alaska, uh, where she has uh, interviews with other archaeologists. And uh, they discuss topics within archaeology. And it's a really cool channel where she goes into a lot of the discussions of human history that often, again, are not really discussed. And that's one of those things that I've always loved. I love learning history that's not taught in school books. Because every time I have to learn about uh, Roman history for the 10,000th time, it's pretty annoying. But I love learning about moments of history that often aren't discussed or, you know, often aren't put into textbooks. And Behind the Trial kind of goes into not just the dirty work that archaeologists really do, uh, but also some of the topics in archaeology and history that often aren't really talked about. So really cool. So my number two goes out to a channel I've been following for a, a while now. Atun Shea Films. Uh, so this is a channel run by a guy who's actually a film student and uh, just just a fan of history, didn't get his degree in history. But what's really cool about this channel is it is more about historiosity. If you don't know what that term means, historiosity means the study of how we remember history, uh, how we discuss it. Um, so it's not necessarily history itself, but always the nature by which we determine what's important to remember and what's not important to remember in history. And uh, this channel does a really good job of going into the historiosity of how we remember moments, mostly of U.S. history, but it also goes beyond that. And, uh, you know, how popular culture represents history 
And it's just a really cool channel if you want to learn more about, you know, maybe misrepresented moments of history or uh, just discussing how sort of uh, the effect of our culture affects how we think about our own history. And it's a really cool channel. And here it is, guys, my number one. El Primero, or I should say La Primera, uh, the <laughs> number one uh, channel I think you guys should follow if you like what I make, Dig It with Raven. Uh, so Raven is an archaeologist. I think she's from Canada. Uh, I'm going to feel bad if I'm wrong about that. <laughs> but uh, Dig It with Raven is a super cool channel that delves into topics of world history, of art conservation, of museum studies, uh, and also reviewing archaeological methods, reviewing the history of archaeology, and even going into food history and experimental archaeology. If you don't know what archae or experimental archaeology is, it's when an archaeologist tries to reconstruct something of the past using the methods the people who produced it in the past would have used. And Raven does really cool videos on experimental archaeology of food, trying to reconstruct ancient recipes for stuff. And sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't, which almost makes them more <laughs> entertaining video. Uh, but part of the reason why I really love this channel is the range of topics discussed. Raven does a really cool job of having a very diverse page not just in uh, the range of ideas that she discusses, but also the range in world history of historical moments uh, across the world that she covers. Uh, but she also, again, one of those awesome archaeologists that I love that uh, discuss the effect of pop culture in historiosity, reviewing a lot of videos related archaeologically. Ugh archaeology and uh, world history and it's uh, really cool the the different range of uh, topics she covers and uh, the different videos she makes things about so really cool and that's our number one of our top 10 YouTube channels you should follow if you like my page now, with all that being said, uh, and I know I, I talked about a couple of channels that I follow on Patreon in there, uh, feel free to head to the link down below where you can find the link to my Patreon if you want to help make all of these videos possible, but also if you want to have a say in making uh, certain videos possible. Uh, one of my tier benefits for certain subscribers is they get to take part in polls for what topics I'm going to cover on this channel. Uh, so you get to voice what you think we should be covering in these channels, whether you want to see a series on the history of cars or uh, the, you know, sociology of Middle Eastern food, you know, or, or primatology, you know, like there's something you want to see you can voice your opinion by signing up on uh, my Patreon and becoming a patron. Uh, but the reason why I usually plug Patreon, which I don't often talk about in my videos, is it's the major source of funding for my anthropological research. I'm an independent anthropologist or freelance anthropologist. What does that mean? That means I don't get paid like anything. Uh, I don't work for a university, so I don't get university funding. And it's really difficult to get grants when you're not attached to a university in some way. So I pretty much pay out of pocket for all of my anthropological research, uh, which is fine because I find fun jobs to work to save up money. Um, but a bulk of my anthropological research funding is made possible by uh, people who donate to my research, either with single payments or with um, regular payments like on uh, Patreon as uh, subscribers there. So uh, if you're interested in learning where that money goes to, uh, because of COVID, I'm a little bit behind on research trips, 
But that's kind of a cool system though because it's actually going to save me money. Once I'm able to travel again, I've got a plan to circumnavigate the globe, prove all the flat earthers wrong, uh, but knock out four research trips in a row. Uh, the first is going to be in Western Europe where I will be investigating medieval warrior women and their fighting styles, and then taking a look at the modern sport of HEMA, which delves into trying to reenact fighting styles or martial arts of medieval Europe uh, through sport, and analyzing uh, how accurately it reenacts fighting styles of medieval warrior women. I'll then be heading over to Greece to investigate the Horaean Games, uh, which were essentially the ancient Olympics in Greece for women athletes. And there's a lot of debate in history over whether these really happened or not. So hopefully I can go and uh, get the answers, whether it was true or not. Uh, just kind of put the nails in the coffin to find out if the Hooray Games really happened. Then I'm heading over to New Zealand to take a look at uh, the role of netball in New Zealand. Uh, netball is a sport similar to basketball for those watching in the United States and is one of the most popular women's sports in the world. Uh, and it's uh, very central in New Zealand to the sort of ideas of decolonization and learning how to uh, blend indigenous and colonial heritages in a post-colonial world. So it's a really cool study. And then finally, I'll be taking a look at the role of women in pre-colonial Polynesian surfing over in Hawaii, but maybe also in Tahiti. I don't fully have the locations set for that one yet, uh, but there's clear evidence that there were women involved in pre-colonial surfing, uh, but the extent to which they were involved is a little bit less clear. So hopefully I can go and learn more about how significant of a role women played in pre-colonial Polynesian surfing and the role Polynesian women continue to play in this now international sport. Uh, so that's what we have to look forward to guys. That's where your funding can go if you get signed up on our Patreon. Uh, so final thank you to everyone who has subscribed on Patreon, subscribed on YouTube, follows me on Twitter, and all the other social media sites, Instagram, whatever it is, wherever you follow, huge thank you. And uh, hopefully you go check out some of those YouTubers I talked about in this video. Uh, but until I see you guys next time, I guess I'll see you in the 300 subscriber special.